Um, we will start with Dan Savage, OrlandoMagic.com. Cliff, when you're going against a team like Milwaukee, how important is rebounding? Um, you know, they always end up being, you know, seemingly one of the best rebounding teams in the league. I mean, I, you know, like to, uh, I told our guys today, the things that, we're, that we've been good at, uh, rebounding, defensive rebounding in particular, the, uh, the turnover game, uh, and we got to win the free throw game, which will not be easy. But those are the things that we're going to have to do to give ourselves a chance. And, uh, you know, it's, that's just the way it is. I mean, they're hard. Uh, they're terrific on offense, and they're just – you know, I mean, they're the best defensive team in the NBA by quite a bit. So um, we have to play well on both ends of the floor, but for sure the rebounding part will be will be critical. Roy Perry, Orlando Sentinel. Hey, Steve, can you um, – I know you've got some guys who are working their way back. Can you provide a, a health update on everybody who was able to do what uh, today in practice? Yes, yeah, so Evan and T. Ross were able to fully participate, and we did contact them. I mean, we got up and down the floor. We did uh, not a ton of scrimmages, but we scrimmaged, and, and they were able to do everything. Uh, A.G. was not able to, but he's a lot closer. He did the walkthrough part at the end, the game planning part, and MCW is still in the boot, so he's – you know, he's out there and so that he knows what we're doing, but he's a little bit further away. Josh Robbins, The Athletic. Steve, uh, Mike Budenholzer is uh, in the past when the Magic, have, uh, when he's faced the Magic, uh, both against Alfred Payton and now against Markel, he has his uh, point guards sag off of, of each guy or his head. And, and I'm curious, how do you want Markel to approach a situation like that if uh, the Bucks give him a lot of space up at the top of the arc in the half court? Well, they do more than that. And this actually goes all the way back to Bud's days in San Antonio. I think if you look at the numbers, uh, San Antonio in pick and rolls and dribble handouts was always one of the teams that went under a lot. Uh, and he did that in Atlanta and he's doing it here. And it's not just Markel. They'll, they'll go under uh, in pick and rolls and dribble handouts a lot more than than most of the teams that we play. So the screening part uh, is critical, that the uh, that relationship between uh, Markel and Vooch, Markel and, Markel and Kim, or you know Aaron Gordon or Gary. Uh, so it's harder for them to get under. The re-screen, the twist uh, becomes important. Um, and then, you know, when uh, Markel a lot of times uh, does what Tony Parker used to do when people would go under against him, he just, he just uses his speed to beat him to the other side of the pick. Um, and then when I think his shot, when his shots are there, I think his shooting confidence is is growing and, and getting back to where it was before play stoppage. And, and uh, I, you know, we all feel confident that he raises up, he'll knock it in. Thank you. Eliana Romero, Orlando Sentinel. Coach, I uh, was just curious if you can provide any insight on Mo Bamba, how he's doing, and whether you think the past COVID-19 diagnosis contributed at all to the difficulty just getting him fit uh, to participate. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm sure you guys know Mo is, is having, a, you know, went home and he's going to have tests uh, so that we can find out what the issues are for sure. But um you know, he had been working hard and, and um, he just didn't feel good. So, um, you know, we, he wasn't seeing uh, progress uh, in his conditioning level. And, and uh, so this is the, the smart thing to do and, and to, you know, find out for sure why, you know, why he was having the, uh, the problems he was having. I mean, I, for me, I'm not a medical person, but certainly it all started when he got the virus and, um, you know, we'll find out more in the next couple of days. Evan Fitzgerald, Fox 35. Cliff, I know last year's playoff series probably feels like about 10 years ago at this point with everything that's happened in between. But how much will that experience help the guys, especially in guys who hadn't been in the postseason before? Or is playing in the bubble just so different and unique that it's hard to draw on much of anything that this is sort of going to be its own thing? 
Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's a great question. I, I do think that, you know, the experience that we had last year uh, helps us um, from the standpoint that we went through it. And I mean, we played the team that, uh, you know, were the eventual champions and, um, you know, I mean, we, you know, we won game one and then, uh, you know, we struggled after that, but we certainly learned a lot from it. And so I think that's valuable. I think your point though, about the bubble, the uniqueness of all of these games is valid. There's obviously, there won't be a big home court advantage in any of the games, which in playoff basketball is, is critical. Um, so we'll see, but I feel like we're in a good place, though. Dan Savage. Cliff, when AG is playing at his peak defensively, what is he, what is he doing for you guys, and and what does he bring to the table? Well, if you look at the numbers um, and you watch him, actually, I mean, he's one of the top, uh, you know, individual defenders against the great, great players. So, like Giannis. Uh, you know, averages over 29. And I think head to head against AG, it's been, uh, I think around 25, eight, I believe it is. Um, but you know, he's, he's, he's technically sound. He's very competitive and he's also, he's a good team defender. So, uh, you know, against LeBron, he does a good job. Kawhi does a good job. Um, and you know, he wants to play badly in these games. I, I think that, when you play against somebody as great as Giannis, it starts with, you know, wanting to have the opportunity to compete against him. And, and I think that's how Aaron looks at it. David Steele. Coach, with uh, the bubble situation being so unique, you just talked about it. Do you think that that means that it, there are, are better chances for surprises overall in the playoffs this year than in normal situations? I do. I, I think one, because um, although the basketball has gotten better, it's certainly not typical uh, NBA basketball at this time of year or, you know, at the end of the season. And because, you know, there's, you know, there's no home court advantage. We don't have to go to Milwaukee and win a game. And uh, so I think those make, you know, that alone makes a big difference. Anyone have any other questions for coach? Uh, back to Roy Perry. Last one. Sorry, Coach. That's all right. Sorry, Steve. Stuck that in. And stuck in on you there. Um, just just to follow up real quickly again on Mo. Do you was there a, a was the team ever around him that you were aware of before he tested positive? I know that was during the individual voluntary workouts, and maybe just sort of you know the concern level about his long term health. Uh, you know, as a result of his uh, contracting COVID. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, I mean, everybody was getting tested every day at Amway. So, um, you know, nobody else got got the virus when Mo got it. And I mean, in terms of the other part, I, you know, Roy, I, I think that's why the decision was made to, so, you know, we could take tests and find out exactly what we're dealing with. So until, uh, you know, until we get those results, we really won't know. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it.